Hi guys, uh, we are going to do practice of our audit planning chapter and we are going to do a question from attempt of September, December 2022. So let's see the requirement or what requirement do we get from the audit rest question. So basically there were two requirements. The B requirement was using the table, uh, you had to calculate the following two ratios for both years to assist you in a planning, to assist you in planning the audit of Magpie company. The ratios are operating profit margin and payables payment period for two marks. So this is a, a very easy requirement that you can attempt. So you have to uh, find out two ratios operating profit margin. So you know for 20x5 using the table, figures in the table, the operating profit margin ratios will be for 20x5 it will be 0.4 divided by 22 multiplied by 100 coming out to be 1.82 percent and for 20x4 it will coming out to be 4.62 percent so okay it seems that operating profit margin is decreasing uh, while we move from 20x4 to 20x5 and the other ratio for payables payment period, let's calculate this. For payables payment period, we will do trade payables divided by cost of sales multiplied by 365 now because this ratio will be calculated in terms of days. So trade payables are 1.9 divided by 10.9. So it will coming out to be 1.9 divided by 10.9 multiplied by 365, it will coming out to be 64 days for 20x5. And for 20x4, your trade payables are 3.2 and cost of sales is 14.5. So 3.2 divided by 14.5 into 365. So the, this, this was 81 days answer in 20x4. So when you will calculate these following ratios, we'll get two marks for doing so. All right. The next question is uh, using the information provided and the ratios calculated, describe seven audit risks and explain the auditor's response to each risk in planning the audit of Magpie company. Since we are doing um, audit planning chapter and we have not yet covered auditor's response section. So I will only be uh, discussing with you this requirement uh, for seven marks instead of uh, 14 marks. We will be covering how should we approach to answer um, how should we uh, how should we answer you know uh, for audit risk question what should be your answer technique so always remember you will always uh, be starting your answer in two columns table format one column for audit risk and the other column for risk response for now you will be leaving this a column empty and I'll be using only one column of audit risk. So the number of rows for the number of risks, so there would be seven rows in total. You will make eight rows, one row for heading and seven rows for seven risks. Okay. And always remember, wherever between the lines you identify a risk, first of all, your audit risk um, answer technique should be in this way. I'm explaining below. So how should you answer um, audit risk question. Number one step, copy paste words from the question screen onto the answer screen wherever you find risk. This will help you identifying audit risk and this will help examiner um, in getting perspective that from where you are identifying the risk. However, this step will give you no marks, but this will save your time. The second step should be when you will identify the risk, you will explain it in the two steps. If there is an accounting treatment applicable, so you will explain what could be the correct accounting treatment. So relevant correct accounting treatment. Your 
accounting knowledge um, will be tested here. So you will mention correct accounting treatment for that. And what is the risk here? What the management has done wrong here? Okay, so what's wrong here? You will explain. And when you will explain it in these two steps, you will get 0.5 marks. Please conclude your audit risk with linkage with impact on financial statements. Please remember guys, this impact on financial statements could be in three forms. The one form is understatement. If you are talking about the amounts, you can use three terms. Whether there is understatement in the amount, for example, or overstatement, or if there are errors, then you can use the word misstatement. Please don't try to use the word misstatement where you uh, where we expect overstatement or understatement. Use the word specifically and correctly. These three words you can use for amounts. And when there is a problem with disclosure, we can use the word the disclosure may be inadequate or missing. Keeping this in mind, let's start solving the question and you'll try to answer every risk using this exam technique. So I'm going to um, read the question thoroughly. And while reading that, I will be identifying audit risk. And you know, while you do that, you have to copy paste words from question to the answer screen, and then you will explain them after data dumping. But I am teaching you here. I am making you understand how should you process the question. So I'll take time and I'll not be uh, copy pasting uh, the words from the scenario. And rather than I will be marking uh, the lines where I identify audit risk and I'll be explaining you how will the audit risk, um, how is the audit risk um, present here. Okay, so it starts from the scenario relates to three requirements. The first part was belong to the uh, your um, chapter four, which is uh, obtaining and accepting audit engagements. Uh, it was related to, I think, so preconditions. So we are going to do two requirements. One requirement we have done about ratios. And for third requirement, I'm reading the question. It is 1st July 2006, you are the audit supervisor at Crow & Company is an audit firm. And we are finalizing the planning for your new client, Magpie Company, for the forthcoming audit for the year ending, 31st July 2006. Guys, we have explained you, I have told you, wherever uh, you will start the audit of a new client, there would be what risk? Yes, very good. There would be detection risk. Why? Because the audit team will be will not be so familiar not so familiar with accounting policies, transactions, balances. Accounting policies, transactions, and balances. Why? Because we are performing the audit for the very first time this year. So, uh, of course, we are not very familiar with their balances, okay? And also, the opening balances of uh, this client uh, will be risky for us. Why? Because uh, we have less, less assurance over opening balances. Why? Because we have not performed. We have not performed audit last year, okay? Um, we are performing uh, the audit for, for the very first time this year, so we are not assured, very assured about opening balances. Because of these factors, your detection risk will be increased. It's possible that auditor might not be able to identify the audit risk. That's why you, this is the explanation that you will write and you'll get one mark for audit risk, okay? Here, accounting, correct accounting treatment was not applicable. So please remember, you will write correct accounting treatment only where it is applicable. Okay, then uh, it says Magpie Company is a retailer of garden supplies, okay, which operates from 20 stores across the country and employs 400 staff, okay? The audit manager has attended a meeting with the finance director and has provided you with the following notes of that meeting and the financial statement extracts. These are the notes from which I'll, I'll be starting, uh, you know, identifying what are the problems. Uh, I have identif identified one audit risk with you uh, from new audit, audit client and uh, how more left? Yes. Uh, seven audit risk, I had to identify six more left. Okay, so starting from the very first. He said during the year, finance director said during the year, the company spent 
0.75 million on refurbishing its stores to improve the customer experience. All of this expenditure has been recognized in the statement of financial position as property, plant, and equipment. What's wrong here, guys? Yes, there is clearly an audit risk. Okay, so basically not an audit risk. Uh, uh, anyways, I can say that there could be incorrect accounting treatment because we cannot uh, capitalize every uh, refurbishment expenditure. It's possible that the management might have incorrectly classified our revenue expenditure as capitalized expenditure. And therefore, what should be the impact on financial statements? Your property, plant, equipment would be overstated and your expenses will be understated because your expenses will be understated, your profit will be understated as well. But you have to explain here, you will um, you will mention here the correct accounting treatment that according to I-16, we cannot capitalize the refurbishment expenditure. And because uh, there is possibility that some of the refurbishment expenditure relates to the revenue nature of expenditure. So it seems that management has applied incorrect accounting treatment, okay? So this, this was the second risk. And now you will link it with financial statement that because they have applied wrong accounting treatment, that is why your property plant equipment is uh, overstated and your expenditures, your expenses are understated. Next is in addition, the company also installed a new sales system during the year, which records all sales and receivables. Okay. The system enables daily sales from each store to be automatically reported to the centralized finance department at the end of the each working day. So they are explaining their uh, system. How does it work? Okay. It's fine. As the system is from um, a market leading provider, it was not felt necessary to run the old and the new systems in parallel. Only because they have purchased a system from a market leading provider, they don't feel that they should run the old system in parallel and they don't bother to check whether the data from the old system is transferred correctly to the new system. Okay, so please be very careful. In such example, in such scenario, there is a high risk because there is no correct accounting treatment applicable. Here, there is a high risk that while transfer of data, while transferring, your data may get lost. Data may be lost. And on the same side, it is possible that your staff uh, your labor is not very trained with this new uh, sales system software due to which it will happen that they might not operate it effectively. That is why they could do, um, they could they can post transactions in the wrong way in the system. And that is why there can, uh, there can happen errors. And where you will mention errors, not in financial statements, because he has, the examiner has mentioned a specific system's name. So I will expect Examiner will expect that you write there will be errors in sales and receivables, not in financial statements. Okay, so don't be very general, be very specific sales and receivables. So you can write that it may lead to first you will explain that how do you expect errors in sales and receivables, you will write that while transferring data from old to new system because it's not run in parallel. So it's possible that data may get lost. And also, if the labor is not very trained with the new system, they may do errors while operating the new system. So that's why your sales and receivables might be mistaken in both ways. So uh, if you explain it in the correct way, you will get a mark. So still now we have identified three audit risk and we have explained it in a good way. Okay, then the next one is customers are able to pay for their goods using either cash or credit card. At the end of the working day, the store manager generates a report from each cash register, which confirms the cash takings. Okay, the cash is then counted and compared to the report. This is again the control they have implemented. Since the new sales system was installed, head office now receives daily cash takings reports, which have shown an increasing number of cash shortages at each store. In such instance, guys, when you see that there are cash shortages at every store, it seems that there could be fraud, okay? And whenever there is a fraud, there is always a control risk. I think if the report says there are cash shortages, it means that their control is effect operating effectively. The control is detecting, you know, uh, the shortage at every store. But what what's, what's happening, these differences have not been investigated or reconciled on the basis that they have only been small amounts. 
no doubt they could be in small amounts but in aggregate of all the stores uh, these small amounts in aggregate can make a material amount okay so you have to mention that first of all this could be an instance of fraud which um, uh, which um, interprets that uh, there is a control risk how is the control risk basically their control is detecting you know uh, the shortcoming um, in the shortcoming of the system because there is a cash shortage. But what's the benefit of such a control if the differences are not investigated or not reconciled, okay? So because of no investigation and no reconciliation, okay, uh, you, can, um, you can tell here that uh, they are being ignored, okay? So basically, such kind of frauds or uh, cash shortages are being ignored because they are just they are simply not being uh, they are simply not being investigated. Okay, so this is an example of control risk. So high control risk here, and you will explain it in that way. Then the company has a number of corporate customers who buy goods on ninety day credit terms, and the level of receivables which are overdue for payment has increased from the prior year. All right. However, the finance director has said she doesn't intend to make any further allowance for receivables as overdue payments are becoming common in industry. So basically, they are telling you that this is common practice in industry. And as we know that a receivable balance has increased uh, from even, uh, you know, the 90 days credit terms uh, since um, even then, we are not, um, uh, we do not intend to create the allowance for that increase in receivables, and we can also corroborate, corroborate this fact with the, uh, with the uh, ratio that we had calculated. Okay, so guys, uh, see, uh, we we are provided with some ratios already calculated by the examiner, so we can say that receivable days are increasing from one zero one to one forty nine days. We will say that. No doubt you say that this is a common industry practice, okay, but si but still there is a risk that receivables um, receivables may not pay the company, okay, may not pay back the company and they may become bad debt. So there is a need to increase the allowance for such receivables. They have not increased their allowance. That is why there is a risk of overstated receivables and understated allowance, allowance and bad debt expense. This is how you will explain it. Then the payable ledger clerk has carried out uh, supply statement reconciliations during the year. And in a number of instances, the supply statement uh, statements have shown a balance owing by the company, which is higher than the balance on the payables ledger. What does it mean? It means that the company's ledger is showing that um, the balance is higher. Uh, uh, the balance is lower. Uh, the payable ledger is showing, for example, the balance of 80. So the company's records show that the company needs to make the payment of 80 to the uh, suppliers, but the supply statement shows that uh, the company owes them 100, let's say. The balance in the statement is higher than the payable ledger. So, okay, then these differences have been included as reconciling items on the supplier statement reconciliations by the payable ledger uh, clerk. Clerk is not a uh, very trained or very uh, senior member who can check that whether the item uh, is reconciling item or not. I have a very serious concern on that. Uh, I think that some uh, items may not be reconciling items and this clerk has incorrectly identified, incorrectly treated the transactions as reconciling items rather than increasing payable and purchases balances. So that is why I think that payables and purchases balances are understated. Okay, so expenses understated and liabilities understated as well because the reconciliations, um, the uh, one junior official, the clerk who is not a very senior official personnel of the company is making recons and uh, he has um, he has made all those items as reconciliations which are the differences without investigating, without carrying out any further work to see that whether uh, are they genuinely reconciling the items or not. Okay, so this is how you will explain this risk. And by now we are, we have identified how many risks. Uh, this was fourth one. And this was fifth one. And this was sixth one. Also, we had a calculated payables payment period. You will corroborate this ratio again with this 
um, with this uh, risk of uh, understatement of payables and purchases, that payable payment period is also uh, decreasing from 81 to 64 days. So this is another proof that they have not accounted for some transactions which should have uh, been which should have which uh, should have been identified as payables and purchases in the current year cycle. Okay, so then it has been discovered number uh, seven it has been discovered that the so soil relating to a batch of plants so basically this business normal course of activity was um related to um garden supplies okay so uh, if there is a batch of soil relating a uh, plant so it means it's an in it's the inventory okay the cost price was 1.1 million they found it to be contaminated meaning that the plants may not be able to be sold Tests are currently being carried out to determine whether the contamination can be remedied. Okay, fine. But we know if the inventory is damaged, if the inventory is obsolete, IAS2 inventory standard applies. He says, uh, it says, sorry, it says that inventory should be valued at lower of cost or NRV. So we have a very serious concern that if the inventory is damaged, the management might not have bothered to value the inventory um, at lower of cost or NRV. So we think that inventory might be overstated. Okay. And that is why your cost of sales will be understated. So this is how you will explain it. Exactly the words that I am saying, you will write in the form of the lines to get the marks. Okay. Then also you can corroborate it with the inventory holding period because inventory holding period is increasing. It means the company takes more time in selling the inventory. It is another proof that yes, inventory might need to be uh, written down, okay? Might need to write down. The report to management issued following the 2X4 audit indicated a significant number of deficiencies noted in the payroll cycle of the business. It's a very common um, uh, risk. If, they, uh, if there were deficiencies in 20X4 audit, then um, I have a serious concern as an auditor that if these deficiencies are not addressed in the current year's audit it means these errors may still occur uh, these control weaknesses may still occur and i have a risk that payroll uh, expense will uh, might be misstated there may be errors in the current year as well so eight risks in total when uh, she asked you to identify seven audit risks you can uh, you could explain here eight risks okay Yes, one more risk. You can also uh, identify ninth risk. You had found operating profit margin. Remember, operating profit margin was decreasing while your gross profit margin is increasing. So now link this information. How possible that your gross profit is increasing, but your operating profit margin is decreasing? It seems to me that there is a risk this, there could be some sort of misclassification of expenses um, between cost of sales and operating expenses. I thought that management might have incorrectly identified some of the expenses as operating expenses while um, uh, uh, while writing them in under the heading of cost of sales. Okay, so it might be possible that some expenses nature relates to cost of sales expenditure, but management has incorrectly treated them as operating expenses just in order to win to address their gross profit uh, margin. So due to this misclassification, I think that their gross profit is overstated and their operating profit margin, uh, of their operating profit is basically understated. So guys, please uh, use uh, this understanding and use uh, the exact, the right approach to answer this question. We'll see you in the next class.